governments. And yes, so almost as if I meant it, look at me using an antique map. In fact, I think I saw that map flick quickly by in your presentation. So I'm, I'm feeling very chuffed tonight with myself. Um, I should also warn you that while preparing this, I was rereading Lord of the Rings, and this <laughs> may have seeped slightly into the um, into the presentation. So I called it uh, "The Harvey Dragons," the NHS in Scotland, and the, the Path to People Power. So today there'll be a brief overview of uh, the NHS in Scotland, why it's a bit different to the NHS in England, and if you, you hadn't guessed, um, some of the challenges and big things that are going on at the moment, how they're um, planning to deal with that. And um, yeah, and just how OpenStreetMaps could feed into it. Maybe it doesn't yet, but the potential exists. So, yes, just for note, here's the leaf, that's, that's who I am. Um, I work in NHS Logan. I, in my day job, I work in mental health and wellbeing, in strategic planning. So, so, so maps not actually involved in what I, I do usually during the day. Um, but I, I met Bob through sort of NHS Hack Scotland, which I was involved in earlier this year. So yes, not equal to NHS Logan. I realise I've put an exclamation mark there, which seems like NHS Logan is factorial. It, it's not. <laughs> um, uh, but it all views are my own. So NHS Scotland. Um, the NHS, if you're using the NHS throughout the UK, it probably feels about the same. You break your leg, you go to A&E, hopefully someone fixes it. You go to your doctor, you get a prescription. Maybe you pay for it, maybe you don't, depending on where you are, but it's very much similar kind of thing. What you probably don't know is that it's really differently organised depending on which part of the UK you're in. Um, NHS Scotland has always been a separate entity since 48. There's never been one big mass NHS which all operates in the same way. NHS Northern Ireland, completely different in its own way. NHS Wales, it's NHS care is, is devolved. And so a lot of what you'll have been hearing on the news about the NHS in England, commissioning, lots of changes, it's not happening here. Um, in, if anything, Scotland, I'd say, is going the opposite direction. So that's a, a source of comfort. <laughs> so the NHS in Scotland, as Bob said, it's, the NHS in general is vast, but in Scotland it employs over 140,000 people, budget of about 11.5, under 11.5 billion pounds. There are 14 territorial or regional health boards, and there are seven special health boards, and they sort of cover the whole of Scotland, so things like the ambulance service, for instance. Um, it's also the Golden Jubilee Hospital, which is a really interesting story itself, so if anyone's interested in that, ask me, but we will go into it now. Um, here's some rough, obviously, antique maps, so these are not um, geographically sound borders, but here's what the different, some of the different territorial boards look like. And you can see there's real difference. Highland, which is this huge one up there, is just vast, um, but it's about a population of 300,000. The biggest is Glasgow, um, NHS Lothian, which I'll zoom in on in a minute, that's about 800,000 people, budget of I think it's around 1.2 or 1.3 billion. So, how is that different to England? In England you have trusts, sometimes trusts are quite small, they could be just a hospital. So here you see one of the hospitals in NHS Lothian, it's the Royal Hospital for Six Children, which is just across the meadows. I thought this looked suitably gothic for the map. <laughs> Um, but it's actually going to be rebuilt, it's going to be a new one soon. But rather than boards just being small, being one trust, one or two hospitals, um, NHS Lothian is actually quite big, so it includes West Lothian, East Lothian, Mid Lothian, includes four council areas, and that will become important. <coughs> and here again, here's, here's Highland, so Highland is, well not all of it, some of it's grabbing over about on, on your right, but it's just vast. So the different boards all have very different issues. Some of them have real um, rural populations where you really spread out populations who all need healthcare, and other places you'll get all the issues you have with inner city women. <coughs> However, while the NHS in Scotland is a very different layout to the NHS in England, it has some similar challenges and um, challenges, opportunities in some cases, but um, I've chosen to represent these as dragons. Um, so one of them is the aging population. The population is becoming older, people are living longer, which is great. Um, people are having fewer children, but that is an issue because you have um, people living longer with long-term conditions. It's great that medical sort of, um, technology has advanced in that way, but it means that more and more of the care that the NHS provides is out in the community, it's keeping people well, keeping people active in their own homes, and moving slightly away from 
what you might imagine as sort of the casualty model of blue lights and, and lots of scrubs. Um, another, I don't know if you've um, noticed, but there, there's a recession. Um, you might not have heard about it in the news, but there's uh, the economic conditions. So we have challenges coming up, but it seems unlikely that there's going to be a large influx of cash with which we can solve those problems. I hope someone recognizes this because I, I was talking to a, a friend last night and I know like, yeah, no one's going to get it. <laughs> I'll laugh. I'll laugh. And then there's inequalities. And here we have uh, small and small gates projecting the giant pile of gold. Because in areas in Scotland, you can go um, 10, 15 miles and you'll find differences in life expectancy that are vast and shocking of um, 10, 15 more years. And, and that's because of, of different communities and different sort of access to resources and health inequalities. And that's a major issue throughout the UK, but in Scotland and in particular areas of Scotland. So we have these dragons. How, how are we going to um, tackle these dragons? Well, we have some, some magic words, um, which are a bit, a bit jargony, but they're sort of our, our sort of policies and directions. And the first one is innovation. And um, NHS Scotland has recently started an innovation agenda. So every board will have an innovation champion. Um, I'm going to tell you the name of the innovation champion for NHS in case you want to email him. He's, he's very nice. Um, but the idea is of this innovation agenda that there are challenges and we can't solve them on our own and we should be working with people to solve them. And we shouldn't just be working with large multinational <coughs> corporations. We should be working with community groups. We should be working with small local businesses. We should be looking at everyone who has good ideas to offer. And that's basically what that word means even though the idea of having an innovation agenda sounds uh, um, yes, interesting. Um, integration. Integration is a big deal. Um, and integration is that we're integrating social care. So at the moment, you might get social and health care from adults. Some people might get it from the council. Some people might get it from health. In some situations, you might get it from both. And it can be slightly disjointed. But um, there's a big push to, to integrate that. Um, and it's being done in different ways by different boards. So you may or may not have noticed it would be a very small footnote in the news. But the, the borders um, and the, the regions that health boards have have recently been slightly reshuffled so that they match those of the council areas and that's to sort of aid with integration. And when it comes in, partnership, that's a word just basically meaning that we work with everyone who should be involved or, or we have staff at it. Um, and the NHS in Scotland is actually really good at it. You, you wouldn't hear so much about it, but in terms of working with unions and working with sort of what we would call stakeholders or people just who are involved and should have a say in things. Um, that is that is the message. And mutuality, which is also a, a big big deal, is that and I guess it, it linked very much to talk on common good, the idea that the NHS is owned by everyone and it's for everyone and everyone should have a stake in it and everyone should have a stake in, in what it does and what it becomes. So those those are those are the words, the magic words. Um, but essentially what they mean is that when you're going to go slay a dragon or subdue it or perhaps redistribute some wealth, what you need is a band and you need a band of lots of people from different backgrounds with different skills. Um, and so not just doctors, it's not just politicians, it's not just NHS managers, it should be people who use services, people who are just interested. Um, I think one of the things that really came out when I was doing NHS Hack Scotland was that the NHS is such a, a big valuable, beloved institution, even though it sometimes does get things slightly pear-shaped. And people want to contribute to it, and people want to be part of it, and that should be really welcomed, and lots of opportunities should be made to, to do that if people are interested. But, even though you have your magic words, you have your excellent team, you have all your skills in one place, you might still come across um, what I like to call a bureaucracy Cthulhu, who is um, yeah, sl slightly impeding your progress. Because sometimes, no matter when we have all these magic words and policies and, and ideas, there will still be pockets of local resistance or people who feel like maybe those policies are a bit nonsense. I don't really want to be part of them. But um, they are localized and there are ways around it. And the, the national policies and the national direction of travel and the way that people are trying to think is using these, these sort of team working, looking at new ideas, trying to integrate things and trying to work together which sometimes feels like it takes more time than just one person bravely forging ahead and directing it, but it's much more productive in the long run. So there's my, um, there's my chat about the vague direction of travel. Um, I just thought I'd really quickly tell you about one or two things that are happening with us. Um, 
when Bob asked me to come chat about this, I ran really quickly just around everyone I knew and I went to a whole lot of meetings and any time anyone was talking about data, I was like, do you know about this event? Do you know about OpenStreetMap? Is there anything you want me to tell people? Will you come? Unfortunately, those people were really excited, but there seemed to be a million conferences going on today, so they haven't come. However, Ian Bell, who's working in um, Edinburgh, Edinburgh City Council, is working on something called Natural Neighbourhoods. And that's the idea that in public services, we'll give names to geographical areas. We'll say, this is Craig Royston, this is Southwest, this is Southeast. But those don't often reflect how people really sort of describe their neighbourhoods, feel about where they live. So what he's trying to do is, it's just a really simple survey. Here's a survey made at Monkey Link, which unfortunately is all on the screen. Um, it's just asking people, what's your postcode? What do you call where you live? And he's going to map that. He wants to map what people call the areas that they live. Um, and he's really interested if anyone wants to get in contact with him. I think he's doing it on a, on a bit of a wing and a prayer and a shoestring. Um, but it's quite exciting and that could tie in to um, local sort of work on wards and council wards in the Edinburgh area. Uh, Meta, Meta Tranter, works at NHS Lothian. She's involved in all sorts of things. One of the things she's involved with is looking at unreported crime. So we've got the police statistics, which tell you where crimes have happened, what's gone on. But we've also got our data about what happens in A&E and where people are coming from and where incidents have happened. And for obvious reasons, sometimes people don't want to report crimes. Um, but she can look and map and say, well, what's going on where? Is there an area where there's a lot of um, bottle crime? Do we perhaps want to encourage um, pubs in that area to switch to plastic glasses? Would that be a good plan? Um, she's also looking at some really interesting stuff about the routes that NHS vehicles take across Lothian and where they're all going and how they interact and how that could be more efficient. And she unfortunately couldn't come she used to, she used to go to Germany this weekend, but she said she's really happy if anyone wants to get in touch. Um, and then Graham Cumming, who is our innovation champion in, in NHS Lothian. And we're having a big uh, innovation event at the end of October, on the 29th, and there's lots of people coming from all over. I don't think it's been advertised externally yet, but if you're interested in that, you should email Graham. Um, and there's my email address at the bottom. Um, I might not be able to answer all your questions, but I'll have a very good stab at trying, at trying to find out who can. Um, yeah, if you have any questions now, I feel free to ask them. I might not be able to answer them immediately, but I can get back to you. Yes. <laughs> um, one of the big changes that has happened in England and Wales over the past year is that the responsibility for public health has moved from the NHS Trust into local authorities. Yes. I'm wondering if something has happened in Scotland as well. I haven't heard anything about it. Um, I'm going to say that they're still on the same floor as me. Okay. But they haven't gone anywhere yet. <laughs> no, I don't think they have to go anywhere. Okay. I just want to, the event that you're talking about, the NHS Fund, I think I remember seeing a little bit about it. Uh, if you email me, I'll put it on the State of the Map Scotland website for dates to the fair for the next ah, yes. So then you'll be able to know where the details are. Um, Alright, yeah, let's just Alright, thank you very much. Alright, well that is it for today, but guess what? There is more tomorrow! Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> uh, right, uh, so uh, yeah, we're just going to be uh, finishing off for the, for the moment, but uh, as I say, tomorrow's more uh, community day. We've got some really interesting talks, we've got some people coming in from the work that's done in uh, Dunbar, and uh, I think we've got like, Strathclyde Police coming in, we've got 3D building maps, we've got all sorts of things. So hopefully, again, it starts tomorrow at 10. Uh, last uh, mention again, Stephen Kayford, like doing the design to anybody else that helped uh, today, and there is the hack day on Sunday. So uh, the only other thing is that there might be a few people meeting at the tree. That's it. See you tomorrow. Thank you.